Hi there, welcome. For those people or who already know about what I'm going to show you, please skip forward and go and check the moulds out that I'm casting. Uh, they're gone? Right, okay. This is for the people that are, if you're going to dabble into casting, just a few of the items that you actually need to actually get yourself started. The first thing I'll start with, the most important, is casting powder. I should put that one there. Uh, the first one is a Herculite 2. Now this is a good all-round casting powder. It will do all of your moulds. But saying that, I do use two casting powders and this is the Crystalline R. This is a porcelain finish plaster which is extremely hard. I use this for the more delicate pieces like tiles, uh, slates, uh, little things like that. So they're both good quality uh, casting powders. I will put a link in the description uh, where you can actually get these from. Uh, you can actually get these off eBay. But other countries, I don't know what, which country you're, you're in, you might have to find an equivalent to it. Right, that is the main, main thing. That's the most important. I'll stress that now, is to get a good quality casting plaster to cast in rubber silicon moulds. Plaster of Paris is no good, don't even think about it, or decoration filler or anything like that. You will not get good results. Right, moving along. What we have is a set of digital scales. The set of digital scales is for measuring weight-wise your casting powder. Most, well, all casting powders will come to either a, a two to one ratio or a three to one ratio, which is one milliliter of water to two grams of casting powder. So you need a set of scales to measure that out accurately. Uh, the next thing, well, well, I'll move these things in because I think a lot of them are out of shot. A spoon, well, the spoon's for dishing up your powder. Nothing too technical about that. There isn't nothing too technical you need. A paintbrush, that is for mixing your plaster and also for painting pigments or paints into your moulds. That's a basic thing. A basic scraper, any shape or size. This is for cleaning off the tops of your moulds. We move along. Mixing containers, these can be yogurt pots, they can be anything you like as long as you can mix them. We also have a disposable syringe. This is a 10 mil syringe. Uh, you'll find that most of the moulds you won't go over 12 mil. Actually, this is it goes up to 12 mil, this one does. They're very cheap to get hold of and you will get an accurate mix by using something like this. Next to it, we have a piece of uh, plastic. This is to actually put your moulds on. I'll bring a mould down. The moulds are quite flexible and soft. This is just so when you cast, you can cast into your mould and you can actually move it away, put it somewhere safe to dry, because if you pick it up, as you can see, you're going to end up breaking your parts, damaging them, and things like that. Put that mould back in its place. Now, another thing that you need is a plastic container and some rinse age. Now the rinse age aid is for soaking your moulds in before you cast in them. You will do a small amount into their water, put your mould in into it and soak it then partially, partially dry it off before you start casting. The rinse aid helps release, well it breaks the water tension in the plaster and helps release the air bubbles from the face of the mould so you do get decent parts. Now, uh, colours. There are already done, there's two videos out. One on pigments, which is, I use the Vallejo pigments and there's also one out on paints. 
I use the Vallejo paints. It's just that that's what I have to hand. There's two videos out. The choice is yours on what colours and how you do it. If you're going to do a lot of casting, I would recommend pigments. If it's going to be little bits and pieces and you don't want to buy pigments and you've got paints in your uh, box, you can use paints quite easily and just as good as pigments. So that is your colouring. We move on now. Uh, I have a small vibrating table which I made myself. There is a video out how to actually make this particular vibrating table. It shows you, tells you all the parts that you need, how to do it, everything. If you don't want to build a vibrating table, you can actually get away with using a piece of plastic and getting a piece of foam rubber or sponge, placing it on, tapping it with your finger. That will do just as well. Uh, failing that, you can actually use a compressor. Start your compressor up on your board and just gently lay it on top of the compressor. The vibrations will do exactly the same job as well. So there's three options there if you require to for a vibrating table. Moving on, the final thing, and I will stress this because this has caused quite a few marital breakups, is I'll just move the camera slightly. Is a container to wash up in. Uh, you need a container to wash up in for the simple reason is when you mix the plaster with the water, the water is only a medium to hold the plaster and the plaster will sink and harden under water. So if you wash your cups up, your moulds, that will go down the drain and it will block your sink up straight away. So if you get yourself a largest container that you can actually put stuff, wash stuff up and get it cleaned up. So that's it. So next up is how to cast the moulds. Hi everybody and welcome. And I'm going to try and run through the casting of two moulds. I'm, I'm going to run through two moulds for the simple reason is they are identical moulds in the way that they're cast, not identical as in shape in that, because one is a pan tile and the other one is a Spanish roof tile. Now, they are the same because they are cast horizontal. This is a very thick mould and if I open that mould up, you can see that that's a very, very deep mould. And it's the same with the Spanish tile. Now, as they're cast this way, it causes quite a few problems. Uh, I.e. Uh, you get a lot of air trapped. You also get a lot of the parts won't make up if you are not careful. So I'm going to try and run through and show you how I do it. I still only get about 95% good parts, even using the technique that I'm using. So to start off with, we're going to put them into our rinse aid. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can actually get a glass of some shape, size or description, roll it round like that and place it in, because then the rinse aid will get all into the holes or the way I do it I put them into my rinse aid put them onto my vibrating table and leave them to vibrate because it does exactly the same job it just knocks the air out as you can see the bubbles are coming up now so that's stage one so I'm gonna leave them to vibrate for a little while and uh, I should put you on pause and I'll be back in a second. All right, that's been vibrating now for a good, what, five or six minutes. So I'm going to switch that off and move it to one side and get on with the next bit. Now, what I have is 20 grams of, this is Herculite 2 uh, casting powder. And also I have 10 mils of water 
with my pigment in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix them up and then I'll come back to you. Okay, that's mixed up. And the next thing you're going to need is a syringe and a 0 0.8 needle. That's the smallest I can go down. If you go any smaller, it won't draw the plaster up. Now, it's a very slow and painful job of just getting this plaster into the syringe. He says, I'm trying to do this with, uh, there we go. Hope my big hand's not blocking. It's not too much effort involved. There we go. We've got this into the syringe. Very medical now. Give it half a dozen good taps just to knock any air up to the top. And we just leave that to one side for a second and we get the mould. Now, by leaving the mould uh, so you're ready to actually pour, it just allows that the inside of the mould doesn't dry out because you don't want to dry it out too much. So it's a matter of onto your bench, onto your vibrating table, should I say. And I'm hoping that I can actually show you this. On with your vibrating table. And I'm going to try this from this angle so you can see. It's a matter of putting your syringe in and individually filling each tile. I know it's going to be a pain in the neck, but I look at it this way. There's no point of rushing it, making rejects, and that means you've got to make more. So you might as well just spend them extra few minutes with a syringe and get some decent parts. Now I'm going to carry on with that because I need to be pretty quick with this. And uh, I'll put you on pause and I shall be back in a second. Okay, it's, I've filled all the moulds up the best way I can with the syringe. Now what I do is I gently go over the top, tapping with my finger. Just to try and, if there's any air bubbles in there, to try and loosen them off and get them to the surface. And you probably can't see because I've probably got my big hand in the way. But as you're doing this, you'll find that the air bubbles will come up. Now, I do just keep doing this, well, as long as there's no air bubbles coming up, then you stop. But I keep doing it, like you see there, we've just got one up there. It's a matter of just keep going over it until you actually don't get any more air bubbles. I know it's a pain in the neck, but even with the vibrating table, these air bubbles just trap in this mould. Uh, it's one of them things. There's not a lot we can do about it. So it's just best to find a way of making good parts each time. So I'm going to carry on with that. And uh, I will be back in a second. And also another thing you can do is just gently open the mould on the side. Like so. Helping any air get to the top and then just carry on. Now, I've been all over that, there's no more air bubbles coming up, so that to me is okay. Now I'm gonna leave that, switch that off, I'm gonna leave that for about five or six minutes, just for the top to uh, start to harden off, and then I'm just gonna flatten it back as we normally do, and then I'll come back to you and we'll see what sort of parts we actually got. Okay, back, moment, moment of truth. Now, you're going to need a pair of tweezers on this because what you need to actually do to get them out is to literally fold the mould over as much as you can. Then with your tweezers, reach in as far as you can and actually pull your parts out, which I'm quite happy to say They're turning out so far. Oh, we'll get that one in a minute. Pretty good. My big hand's not in the way, is it? As I can't see. Now, 
the only damaged ones you're going to get now is the ones that you create as you go along. Now, I normally work out the middle first on these, like so. And I am checking them as I go. Another thing is, as you're going along, and if you pull them out and they've got an air, air bubble in, don't throw them away. Get yourself another container, put them in, because they will be ideal for scatter in your debris piles. Uh, because there's nothing worse than having to break up perfectly good tiles to put into your debris pile. But I'm quite happy with them. As you can see, they're all turning out really nice. Now, once you get the, the centre out like that, that means that you can actually get your fingers into that middle bit and you can do the same on the next bit and start pulling them out because you'll find that the the more that you can flex the mould back the easier it is to actually get them out so that's how to do either the Spanish tiles or I broke that one or the pan tiles I know it's a little bit of mucking about, but to get good parts out of it, it's worth all the aggravation. So, I'm just going to thank you very much for joining me and watching this uh, short video, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one.